So I know that we have almost 900 people in this group, which is amazing. And what I wanted to do, I know I have introduced myself before, but I would love to introduce myself again in case you have no idea who I am or if you've just joined this summit and you haven't quite oriented yourself yet. So hello, my name is Tash Ashwin. I am the publisher of this amazing book, Wild Woman Rising, Brave Women Who Carved Their Own Path. I also am the publisher of another multi-author book, Sacred Rebel, Women Who Dare to Disrupt, which is actually being launched in two weeks time tomorrow. Sorry, two weeks on Friday. It's being launched two weeks on Friday, which is unbelievably exciting. Uh, I have also co-authored two other, uh, other multi-author books as well. Uh, those books were released in 2019 and they are called uh, Leaders, Meet the Women Who, no, sorry, Leaders. Meet the women who change the world with their business. And the second one is called Awakening. Meet the women birthing the new earth. So, so far I've done, I've contributed to two as an author and I have published two multi-author books as well. And I feel like I have quite a lot to say on this topic because I have quite a lot of experience, quite a lot of experience in the publishing world now, which is very, very exciting. So what I wanted to do today is talk with you about one of, uh, talk to you and talk with you, have a conversation about one of my favorite topics, which is how to actually use a book, whether that's your book that you've published, whether that is a, a multi-author book that you're contributing to, or whether that's a book that you have in your mind that one day you would like to publish, how to actually use that book as a leverageable marketing tool to add up to and even over an extra $50,000 of profit to your business. We talk about this from the perspective of monetizing a book. So I wanted to share a little bit about the publishing industry because it has changed a lot over the past 10 years. We have really seen a decline in the old way of published books, right? Where you would get a book grant from a publisher to go off and to write your book. You know, you would, you would submit a manuscript or you would submit a, an, a concept for a manuscript. They would pay you to go and create your book. And, you know, six months later, you would have your book and they would pay for, you know, a really big uh, book launch, you know, a, a book tour, that kind of thing to in order to really get it on on sale, right, and to get it in front of people's eyes. That's really changed, kind of a bit like how the music industry over the past 10 years has massively changed, right, thanks to Spotify and streaming services and things like this. The publishing industry has changed in a massive way as well. And the truth of the matter is that on the front end, right, <clears throat> excuse me, on the front end, we're talking uh, how much, like, in, we're talking on the front end of a business, right? On the front end, your books don't necessarily make that much money anymore, mm -hmm. right? Books don't make that much money on the front end. And that's because of a number of different reasons, right? It's because of, you know, the pricing of books being driven right down, kind of like the price of music has been driven right down in streaming services. Uh, it's also, it's, it's for a number of different reasons. But the truth is that books don't bring in a lot of money on the front end, okay? Not like they used to back in the day. Unless you have a book that charts, you've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of people purchasing it. It's charting on all, you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, all of that. That might be a bit of a different story. But typically, a typic, the typical book does not bring in a huge amount of money. But what it does do, and this is something that I find very fascinating and, and it's a very powerful model that I've explored, what it does do is it has the potential to bring really big, large amounts of, of awareness to a brand or to a person. Okay, so when you launch a book, provided you launch it in a way that is strategic and in a way that is, you know, really carefully thought about, when you launch a book, and, and, and as, as long as you have a number of back-end things in place, which is what we're going to talk about today, your book has the potential to add a lot of money to the back end of your business. Okay, so we've got front end of the business, how much direct sales are happening, and then back end of the business. How much in the background you're, you're making through selling your services, through your programs, through your course creation, uh, for your membership site, whatever it is in the background that you are funneling people to. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to share with you some really powerful strategies that I share with my authors that I have shared with the authors in Wild Woman Rising and with Sacred Rebel. I'm going to share these with you guys as well because they're very, very powerful 
and they can and you can essentially take these if you have your own book you can take this and you can adapt it to your own book this will give you an idea around whether or not participating in a multi-author book is something that you would like to do as well when you start to hear about the sort of strategy that I use with my clients and it will give you a really good opportunity to understand if publishing in general is a direction that you would like to go in whether that's through your own publishing company hi Donna uh, whether that's through self-publishing whether that's through uh, you know joining up with another publisher such as me we've got a few publishers in this group Taryn Shannon and Leanne and Joe as well. So I'm going to grab some tea. As you're joining me, I'd love to see. I'd love to see who you are. So say hello, uh, and let's get started. So I do have some notes that I'm going to pull up over here. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So the first thing that we are going to talk about, because we're talking about a big goal here, right? So let's. We're talking about how to add fifty thousand dollars in profit to your business through monetizing a book. If you caught my masterclass that I did at the very beginning, two Thursdays ago, I did a masterclass around activating wealth codes. So I have a background in, in mindset work and energetic work and, and business strategy as well. But in particular, when we're talking here about big goals such as this, the first place that I always start with my clients and with myself personally is to look at the mindset that I have at the moment around a goal. Okay. So the first thing that I want to direct your attention to is the importance of looking at a goal such as $50,000. I would like to bring in $50,000 into my business through monetizing a book. I want you to look at that goal or whatever goal it is that you want to set. The first step is to set the goal, okay? Because what we will often do is we won't set a tangible, measurable goal and it'll be a very, very subconscious almost a very subconscious sabotage program because we have lots of beliefs going on. Maybe we are aware of them. Maybe we are not where we go. Well, if I set a goal and I don't reach the goal, then I might get really disappointed. Or what about all those goals that I set all those times in the past that never eventuated? I set goals then and they didn't happen and I don't want to repeat the same mistakes. I don't want to set myself up for a fall, if that makes sense. So we need to look at the number. We need to we need to actually call in a very tangible number. So we're talking fifty thousand dollars extra profit here, and we need to do a little bit of inquiry into that. So when I look at fifty thousand, if I was to write fifty thousand dollars down on a piece of paper and I was to look at that number, and I was to imagine myself easily making that number in my business, what's going to come up? What are the beliefs that come up? Is it going to be that we have thoughts come up around that's impossible? That's going to be really hard work. Uh, other people might be able to do that, but there's no way I can actually do that. It's important to really understand the, the mindset that we are operating in, okay? Because if you set a big goal, such as adding $50,000 of profit to your business through monetizing a book, then the subconscious beliefs that go that 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 sort of inform the energetics of that goal are going to ha essentially have a very big part to play in the results that we are going to receive so what comes up for you when you think about earning that much money right is it yes that sounds fun that lifts my energy i can totally see how that's going to be possible maybe it's not going to be easy but it's definitely doable or when you think about 50,000 extra, is it, oh gosh, that seems impossible. <laughs> I've had to work really hard in the past for money and you know, $50,000, that's a lot of money that feels like it's gonna be a lot of hard work. So this is the first step, okay? To set the goal, to get really clear on a number, to work through all of the, any of the mindset stuff that comes up. And as you're joining me, please say hello, because I love interaction. So say hi, let me know where you're joining me from. We want to understand what this evokes within us, okay? And that is always the first step with any big goal that I set and with any big goal that I get my clients to set, okay? Is to make sure that we are getting energetically aligned and aligned, we're priming our mind to this goal, okay? So that's kind of the preliminary foundational work that we're gonna, we're gonna move on from that now, but I cannot stress the importance of that because otherwise, like I said, it's going to contaminate the goal that we're going to set. Okay. And we're going to find that we might not reach the goal, reach the end result that we want. There we go again. That's another, that's another example of how I never reach the goals. So that's kind of part 
zero. The second, well, the first real part, right, or this, we could talk at the second part, okay, is to understand what is it that you want a book to do for you, okay? So we need to set intentions here. First, we set the money goal, and then we set, well, why? Why do I want to, for example, create a book, participate in a multi-author book, uh, write my own book, maybe start up my own publishing company? Why do I want to do that? Do I want to do that because I love the concept and the idea of sharing my story or because I want to I want a powerful tool to leverage my business because I want to you know I want to see my book and my name on that book start to chart internationally and I can understand I understand the incredible momentum that that's going to bring why do I want to create a book what is my intention for this this is really important yeah and I I talk about books the power of books from the perspective that they do lots and lots of different things for a business model, okay? So we've got different components of it, right? The power of sharing story cannot be underestimated. When we share story, we shift, it's actually been scientifically proven that we shift out of the brain and into the heart, right? There's a very particular part of the brain that gets activated, that's very connected to emotion. When we share story, when we hear story, emotion, is what brings us into the heart, right? So whenever we share story, whether this is through content, whether this is through a book itself, whether this is through um, in your client conversations or your client calls, if you're sharing stories to help your clients understand a point, it's a very powerful way to help people get into their body, into their heart. So we can really captivate and connect with people through story. Also the powerful benefit of sharing, whether it's in your own book or in a multi-author book, of sharing your story and really sharing your expertise, is that it gets your name out there in ways that you cannot even imagine. When we share a book, when we write a book, we're actually creating a legacy, right? Something tangible that we can hold in our hands, that we can pass on, it gets passed all around the world, right? And I love this, this imagery, that the books that, re that we release just before we release them, we can imagine like the, these are the tentacles of our message spreading its way, wrapping its, wrapping its wings around the earth, right? Our message is very, very powerful. And through published works, we are leaving a legacy. People are able to find us in ways where, you know, we put out a book and then the, that book will pop up in all sorts of different ways. People will recommend People will see it come up when they're searching through Amazon or when they're searching through whatever other platform it gets released on. It's very, very powerful for really sharing your message in a way that goes beyond social media. Now, if you saw my masterclass, my first masterclass two Thursdays ago, you would have heard a little rant that I did about the power of publishing and why we need to really think about it, especially if our message in our business is somewhat disruptive. So the women and the, the men that I work with, their message is disruptive. They have a message that might go against the status quo, right? It might challenge some people. It might challenge the, you know, the, it might upset the apple cart. What we're seeing on social media a lot is that people who share messages like that get censored. If you're running your business through social media, if, if that is the primary way that you are creating clients and income, this is something you really want to be careful of, okay? Even an old mentor of mine, she didn't even say anything disruptive, but Facebook just decided to cut her off from her, from her profile for a week, right? That had massive implication. So it's really important that we have other ways that we are sharing our message. Obviously, your newsletter email list is really important. Having different types of social media accounts, having some local publishing or some, some local marketing, if that is, if you also work locally, but publishing and, 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 cre and sharing your message through published works is going to ensure that you always have that message to share that is undiluted. I believe that our most potent and magnetic form of expression is powerfully undiluted, right? It is the, it is the purest form of our voice. And when we dim it to fit in, or when we dim it to subscribe to societal conditioning, we are dimming a very, very important part of our magnetism and a very important part of the soul of what it is that we do. 
So setting the intention, right? This is what I want my book to do for me. This is, I would love my book to add an extra $50,000 profit to my business on the back end. I would love to sign new clients. I would love to raise my prices. I would love to use my book to be featured in publicity, to be featured in PR, to generate big PR campaigns, to be featured in local media, getting really, really clear on what we want this book to do for you, okay? So the next step that we need to do is to ensure that what it, what it is that we are deciding to write about, whether that is in a chapter, like a 3000 word chapter, or whether that is in your own book itself that you are channeling and creating and birthing. We birth books just like we birth our babies and we birth our businesses, we birth a book. You really want to ensure that the, the message that you are sharing and that you are delivering is there is a thread that connects that message with the transformational work that you do with your clients currently. So whether you're sharing story, whether you are sharing, like whether you are teaching, this is especially important if you're sharing story. Okay, so I'm going to dive into that. It's important to uncover what I call the golden thread that connects your story, your life experiences, with the transformational work that you currently facilitate. And there's a number of different ways that we can uncover that, right? But if we just share the story and we don't bring it back to why this is important for my clients or why this is important for my potential clients to understand this story, how this story connects with the work that I facilitate, if we do not if we do if we don't know how to link that, then it's like we give people a taste but we don't give them the full meal, right? We just give them a little taste of our work, but we don't give them the actual next step. We don't link it in to how this experience actually is relevant to them and to your niche and your area of specialty, okay? This is really important, and I call this uncovering the golden thread. Now, there's a few different journaling questions and journaling prompts that I wanna share with you that's going to help you to understand what's your golden thread to share and remember, we have many, right? Especially if you're writing a book, your own book, there's going to be many different threads that you can peel, that you can uncover and weave together, right? And these threads create the, the powerful content of your 70,000 word book, right? But if you are writing one chapter in a multi-author book and you only have 3,000 words, that's not going to be as effective, right? We, we need to find the, like the primary golden thread, the primary topic the, oh, I'm going to use the analogy of the thread, the primary thread that links the story that I'm sharing or the expertise that I'm sharing uh, with the transformational results that I facilitate. So some journaling questions here. These questions are going to be very helpful for your content creation as well. So I want you to think about these questions. If you're in the process of creating a lot of content for your business, I want you to understand how do these threads, do these journaling prompts inspire me to, what do they inspire me to write about for my content as well? This works both ways. So number one, what have my life's experiences been guiding me to know or do or embody? What have my life's experiences been guiding me to know or do or embody? If you think about your life, if you cast your mind, cast your mind back, You'll, think, you'll, you'll be able to see real turning points in your life, right? Cornerstones, if you will. Events that got you on the path that you are on right now. It's kind of like, if that thing didn't happen, I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing now, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the awareness that I bring to my clients, or I wouldn't have actually made the decision to, to study the thing or to start the business. If that thing hadn't have happened, I wouldn't be here right now. I love to tell my clients and my authors to find three of these, three of these cornerstone events, right? And to understand how did that thing, that event, how did that impact the work that I do now? How does that story, that thing that I learned about, that thing that I moved through personally, emotionally, financially, physically, spiritually, whatever it is, how does that, how does that speak to the work that I currently do now with my clients? A, a piece of homework for you that's going to be incredibly powerful is to take one of those moments in time and you want to find a moment in time that is emotive, right? That, that still, that brings up emotion, that's powerful for you, that's tangible for you. And I want you to create content around it, write it as a story. 
get into your storytelling mode actually write the story actually go back cast your mind over that moment in time and write about it or talk about it get on Facebook live and share it with your community remember to find the golden thread that links that story with the transformational work that you do now the moral of the story so to speak okay so it's really important to understand this so that we don't end up just writing a chapter or writing a book that has no actual relevance to the work that we facilitate right now because what we're doing with you know that from a, a marketing perspective what we do with a book whether it's a multi-author book or a solo book the idea is that when we when we use it as a marketing tool we are funneling people from the book to our website from the book to our social media channels, from the book to our Facebook group, from the book to our opt-in, right? It's a very powerful way to start to funnel people that are the perfect fit for your work so that you can really, you can take them to a place that you want them to be. Now, it's often important to remember what's that next big stage that I want to take with my clients. So this brings me to point number two, okay? How do I write intuitively and strategically so that I can maximize the launch exposure and attract high level clients? Now I'm going to sneeze. I have terrible hay fever at the moment. <laughs> Excuse me. How do I write intuitively and strategically? Okay, so this is another really important part and it's very connected to the first part that we spoke about uncovering the golden thread. But we really need to be able to write, put, you know, to wear both hats at the same time. Our intuitive hat, by intuitive hat, I mean, I can connect in with what I call your unseen support team, right? You might have a different word for them. I can connect in with my unseen support team and I can channel through the story or the message or the, the teaching or the transmission that is the most potent thing, that is the highest expression. So I believe this is an intuitive gift, right? Because our stories come through us. Please bear with me one minute. Sorry about that. Our stories move through us, okay? They move through us. It's like any creative art. My partner is a musician, okay? He is, the music spews out of him, literally. He will finish one amazing song and two minutes later, the next one is coming through, right? It comes through. The same is true for us when we are writing, right? The most perfect and, and poignant story to share, I believe, will always move through us. So we need to have our intuitive channels open for that. But it's also really important that we learn how to write strategically at the same time, okay? So these are like walking between two very different worlds, like the feminine intuitive world and the masculine strategic world. If we don't have the strategic components with the story that we are sharing, then we're not going to actually, we're going to, we're going to write a fabulous story and we're going to touch, move and inspire people, which is fabulous in and of itself. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to funnel people through into the next step, okay? So understanding very clearly who is the ideal client for me? Who is my soulmate client? I call this your soulmate client. I believe that we have soul contracts to work with our highest level clients. And when we work with those clients, they also have a soul contract to work with us, right? When we work with people like that, and we don't just work with anyone and everyone and take on the clients because we need the money. When we work with people like that, we are both as the practitioner or the coach and the client, we are both left transformed, right? So I call this a soulmate client. So we need to understand very clearly who is that highest level soulmate client for me? Who is that highest level person that I speak to in my messaging? What excuse me, what do I help them deal with, right? What problems do I help them solve? What outcomes do I facilitate for them? What is their highest vision, right? What is their version of Pain Island and Pleasure Island? And how do I help my client go from pain into pleasure? How do I help them? How do I take them on that journey? So it's really important to understand all of these things because when we're writing, when we're writing our chapter and writing a book, 
we need to bear this in mind. We want it to be so that when our, our soulmate client or someone who fits the profile of our soulmate client reads our chapter or is exposed to our book, they feel as if we are talking to them, right? They feel as if we are directly speaking to them. That's a really important piece because that's what's going to get them in the heart. That's what's going to help them start to see and feel and understand you and your work and your story and the things that you can help them with as something that they want to spend their time knowing more about. So if we don't understand the soulmate client, it's like basic 101 marketing, right? If we don't understand what's the main problem that I solve for my clients, if we don't understand how to articulate that in 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 the language that they use, right? Not speaking about it from the coach perspective or speaking about it from the therapist or the healer perspective or the consultant perspective, but speaking about it through the languaging that they use, right? Otherwise we're speaking English, they're speaking Spanish, even though we're talking about the same problem. We need to be able to articulate that in a way that they understand, right? So what is that main problem that you help your client solve? What are the outcomes that you help facilitate for your clients? The clearer you are in these things, the more you can weave them through strategically through your chapter or through your book. And that is going to help in a major, major way when it comes time to monetize your book, right? Because otherwise it's all intuition and no strategy. It's all feminine and no masculine. We need both. We need both. So I take all of my authors through very detailed processes where I help them to uncover all of these things, right? And for a lot of my clients, they might feel like I've done this stuff before. Uh, you know, I've done so much ideal client work, but I believe as just as we shift and evolve and shift and change and grow, so does our business and so does our ideal client or our soulmate client. This is something that actually we should be really paying attention to on the regular because this Keeping up with this is essential. If you don't know how to articulate this stuff in your content, in your story or in your book, then you're, you're going to find that it's not going to land for people in the way that you want it to. Okay. Okay, cool. So the next component is to start to see storytelling as something that's very sacred, as something that has the power to touch, move and inspire people. Storytelling, like I touched on before, is so powerful for helping connect to your audience, right? And if we think about the ways that storytelling has been used for millennia, we'll understand that it is the thing that has stuck with humans this entire time, is our ability to tell story, our ability to connect with, with, with people around us, right? If you cast your mind, if you imagine, you know, millions of years ago when we lived in tribes, right? When we lived on the plains, we would sit around a fire. We would share story. We would talk about, we would share things that had happened and use that, that story to teach people, right? To share morals. This would be the primary way that we would connect with people. So our capacity to share story and to be vulnerable, I call this elegantly vulnerable, right? We don't want to be just spewing out our shit left, right and center. We want to be able to do it in a way that is poised, in a way that keeps posture. But when we can be elegantly vulnerable, then we, it's like it's a very powerful disarming way, right? We, we can disarm the people that are reading our stuff. It's a very, very powerful tool to be able to connect with your people. And it is actually a sacred thing. I believe it's very sacred, right? So see story as a sacred opportunity to connect. Look back over your life and recognize just how far you've come. Recognize that the woman that you were or the man that you were 10 years ago is not the man or the woman that you are today. And understand what were the things that I had to go through, that I had to journey through, that I had to learn that have got me to this place here where I say I can claim my expertise. When we can understand this and understand storytelling as a sacred process of connection, sales becomes very easy because guess what sales is? Sales is a sacred process of service. So sales and storytelling actually go hand in hand. And I, I had to do a lot of work personally on my relationship with sales, on my relationship with money before I started actually calling in good amounts of money, before I started actually cracking that six-figure ceiling, right? 
I kind of I cannot tell you the amount of work that I've had to do and that I, I loved to do because it had such an impact so quickly on my relationship with money and on my relationship with sales. When we can see sales as service and story as a sacred process of connection, they go hand in hand, okay? So that's a really, really, really important thing to understand. If we are adding an extra $50,000 to our business profit by monetizing a book, we need to know all of these things. We need to be implementing all of these things, okay? We need to have a really clear way that we are connecting with our people through story, and we need to have a really clear sales process as well. How do I move that person that has connected with me when they've read my story or when they've listened to my story, if it's an audiobook? How do I then move them through a sales process if they are the right fit, right? If they are the kind of person that reads my work and goes, I need to know more about this woman. I would love to know more about this man. I need to know more. I would love to work with them. I want what she's got, right? And this is what we really want to be able to do. Otherwise, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, but otherwise you're just writing a book that gets shared around and it's not necessarily becoming a leverageable marketing tool, okay? So it's really important to have systems in the back end of your business so that when it comes time to launch a book, and let me tell you, when we launch a book, it generates a huge amount of momentum for your business, for your brand, and for you, a massive amount of momentum. If we don't have the systems in the back end of our business fully set up, if we don't have our online presence fully set up, optimized, it's going to be a wasted opportunity. It, well, it won't be a wasted opportunity because you're still going to be getting yourself out there. You're still going to be calling in next level credibility and authority simply by becoming published, but you are missing out on a very big opportunity to really call in higher levels of clients and higher levels of money. So we need to understand, and this brings me to my next point, what is my post-launch promotions plan, okay? So if you imagine when this book gets launched, whether it's a multi-author or a, uh, a solo book, what is the direction? And provided I've done all the other things that I've mentioned, I've written strategically and intuitively, I've found the golden thread, I've done all the mindset and energetic work to energetically align with the goals, I've started to see sales, sorry, I've started to see storytelling as a sacred process of connection and sales as a sacred process of service. All of these things are very important. They stack upon one another. When it comes time to launch my book, what is my post-launch promotions plan? Where do I want to take people who, who, who find me, right? What's that offer? What's that process? What's that, what's that thing that I am launching in the back end of my business that's going to support that person who reads my story and wants to work with me. When they go to my website, is it clear what I do, who I help, who I serve, what the, what the problems are that I, help, that I help my clients solve? What are the outcomes that I help my clients facilitate? When they go to my social media channels, is it clear all of these things? Because let me tell you, when your book gets launched, you will have huge amounts of people checking out your website, checking out your social media, especially when you launch multi-author books. And if you launch them with me, we do this in a very specific way, where at the end of your chapter, you have a bio. And in your bio, you have all of your links. We launch initially on Kindle. So when they find that book on Kindle, when they find your bio, they can click on your links and it will take them immediately to your website, to your email, to your Facebook account, to your Instagram, to your website, right? It will take them immediately there. So it's very, very important. And for any of you who's watching from Sacred Rebel, because we're about to launch in two weeks time, this is super important for you guys, as you all know, I've been talking about this. You want your the whole back end of your business to be fully optimized. Otherwise, you're missing out on a big opportunity, okay? So once all of that is done, you have all, like you have your website, your social media, you have everything looking really aligned, really similar, and it speaks the most powerful version of your message. Then we need to know where are we taking people, okay? So am I launching a book? Sorry, am I launching a program? Am I launching a one-on-one -on -one offer? Am I launching a membership? What's the direction that I want to take? What is my post-launch promotions plan? If I want to add an extra $50,000 to the back end of my business as profit, 
not through front end sales of the book, but through back end sales, right? Through my courses, programs, uh, one on one offer, my signature offer. What do I need to sell that's going to have me reach that $50,000 mark, right? If I have a one on one offer that's $10,000, I need to sell five of them. So what do I have to do when I have all of this exposure and momentum and eyes on me and my business? What do I have to do to sell five one-on-one -on -one spots? This then becomes a very easy way of understanding. Okay, so I've got my program, it's $5,000. I'm gonna accept 10 people, boom, that's my $50,000 right there, okay? So it's, then it becomes important for you to understand your sales process. So how do you go about signing clients? right? How do you go about, about connecting? How many people do you need to have sales calls with in order to sign 10 high level soulmate clients? If you want to sign 10 of them, maybe you have to have 20 or 30 sales calls. So what's that funnel? What's that direction that you're taking people in? Okay. When someone lands on your Facebook page after your book has been launched, do you have serious high quality content, transformational content, not just informational content. Do you have content that they can read, right? When they land on your Facebook page and they start to scroll through your Facebook page, are they gonna be able to very quickly understand, yes, this woman is gonna help me or no, this woman is not? Are they gonna very quickly be able to understand who you are, what your values are, what you believe in, what problems you help your clients solve, what solutions you provide? You don't necessarily need to be teaching them the how or, the, or, or, or the, the intricacies of your model or the intricacies of your frameworks that you move your clients through, but it's very important that when people land on your page or your website, that they clearly can understand if you are the person for them. There needs to be a clear pathway for them to book a call with you, right? Or for them to join your Facebook group or for them to go to a payment link to pay for whatever it is that you are launching. Okay, this is really, really important. And this essentially is going to make or break your, your, your launch experience, right? If you want your book to launch, to be launched, and for that launch to be monetized, meaning you're gonna turn that into cash, you're gonna turn that into more clients, you're gonna turn that into higher levels of, of authority and credibility, which will in turn allow you to raise your prices which will in turn allow you to deliver a, maybe you know, a much more sophisticated service for a lot more money to a lot less people, right? Which is what we can do when we have a book. Not only that, but especially when you have a multi-author book, you are able to access the networks and often the international networks of all of your other co-authors. Why? Because you're all promoting the same book. So when you promote the book, you're also promoting everyone else's chapter. And so people on your, in your community, maybe they aren't the perfect fit for your work, but they might be the perfect fit for, some, for, for another of your co-authors. And the same is true vice versa. Maybe your, your co-authors community, in that community, there will be people who are the perfect fit for your work. They read your chapter, they are touched, moved and inspired. You've maybe taught them something very powerfully. Maybe they've implemented something that has transformed the way they understand the area that you specialize in, whether that's business or health or relationships or money, so many different areas, right? If you've, if you've crafted your chapter in a way that is strategic yet intuitive, it will land in front of the people that it's supposed to. And those people, your soulmate clients, will have a clear pathway to find you and to work with you. And this is why especially multi-author books are such a powerful, leverageable, marketing tool. But the same is very true for solo books as well. You just have to do a little bit more work because you don't have 26 or 25 other co-authors to help you launch your book as well, right? So it's definitely a very, very, very doable thing. It's just you need a much bigger marketing plan and budget. Okay, so let me have a look at my notes to make sure I am staying on track. So we want to have a really clear post-launch promotions plan that is in alignment with the goal that we are setting. All right, I want a fifty thousand. I want to add fifty thousand dollars profit to my business, which means this: I need to have the back end of my business optimized. I need to have a clear pathway. I need to have a shit hot offer, right? That I love, that lights me up, that I don't have to fake 
because it is an expression of my soul. I don't have to fake that excitement. Whenever I talk about it, people can feel that excitement, right? That momentum is generated because of my excitement and my energy. And I have a really clear sales process that I can move people through that takes someone from a, someone who's just discovered me to a paying invested client. Okay, that's really, really important. Now, the final piece that we're going to talk about, which is also a, a very powerful component of being published, is actually knowing how to leverage your book launch to be featured in local and international media and publications. Now, with this, it's pretty much as big as like, it's, it's the question of how big do you want to go? What, what publishing a book will do is it will put you on the map. Okay, it will put you in front of a lot of people. It will generate mass momentum for your business. How big do you want to take that? How big do you want to go? When it comes to being featured in publications and PR and generating big PR campaigns, being featured in local and international media outlets, the world is your oyster, right? Essentially, the world is your oyster. If you have the, if you have the ability to connect with people who are at those publications, right? Whether that's through hiring a PR specialist to use your book and your often best-selling title as a really powerful pitch platform, or whether that's something that you do yourself through reaching out, especially to local publicity, right? Local media outlets will love your story because not many people, I can guarantee you this, will have gone through the process of becoming a best-selling author and will have become published. Only 1% of the population actually become published. And the, the amount of people that actually take that book to bestseller is even, is even smaller, okay? So when you do launch your book, I always recommend for my authors and my clients that they use that launch exposure to get featured in local media, which will then be fabulous for your website, fabulous for your social media exposure, and for your, for your ability to generate high levels of authority and credibility, that's quite an easy thing to do. They will lap up your story. Using this to get featured in, say, first, second, and third tier publications is a little bit of a different story, but it is absolutely doable, right? You need to know people in the industry. You need to have an in, okay? So I've seen people take their multi-author book you know, their best-selling multi-author book and use that as a pitch platform to get featured in Forbes, to get featured in Entrepreneur, to get featured in Disrupt Magazine, to get featured in Inc.com, right? There's so many other, so many online platforms now that are going to help you generate huge, like even more exposure than your book will generate. But your book is going to help you land there, okay? It's gonna help you land at those higher levels. When we do that, right, this is all about, at the end of the day, the online world, especially the online business world, it is a bit of smoke and mirrors, okay? So a lot of people that actually end up in Forbes, Entrepreneur, they pay to get there, right? Just like a multi-author book, yeah, you pay to play. You pay to have your chapter in there to generate that kind of exposure for you. The great thing about a multi-author book though is that all you do is you write your chapter and you follow the guidance of your publisher and they take care of the rest, right? They take care of all the editing, all the formatting, the cover design. They take care of uploading it to all the different platforms. They take care of the, the actual print distribution, right? They take care of the formatting. And so when that book is launched, you have to take, you have to play a part in promoting that to ensure that that book does chart the way you want it to chart. But it is so much easier to participate in a multi-author book than it is to actually go and write your own book. Now, having said that, I do support people, I do support women, clients, entrepreneurs who write, who have written their own book and want that published as well or who wants support to write their book. I actually have two one-on-one -on -one solo clients at the moment that I'm working with to do just that, which is super exciting. But the power of a multi-author is that you're using the power of networking, yeah? The power of your network of, of, of the other authors that are contributing to that book. You are, as long as you are doing it strategically, right? So when that book is released, you have a very clear plan you have, a, a, you have the support of someone who has been through this process before, who can energetically hold the space for up to 30 people, all contributing their energy to this book, who has business strategy and marketing savviness so that when this book is launched, you can monetize it. 
You can turn it into money, into profit. Really, really, it becomes a very powerful tool provided you have all of those things, provided you followed that simple strategy that I've spoken to you about as well. So I'm going to have some tea because I've been talking a lot. And I would love to open it up to any questions. Does anybody have a question? Love the message and feeling the gaps. Yeah, look, Gabrielle, this is just, it's one of those things, right? Anytime we do something once, it's the first time we've done it, yeah? Just like the first book I released, the first chapter I launched, it was the first time I'd ever done it. The, the, what I've noticed throughout this journey is that your nervous system, and this is, so, this is so true for business as well, your nervous system is everything. Your nervous system is the relationship between your nervous system and your subconscious mind, right? It will make or break your experience, yeah? It will not make or break, but it will give, it will either generate the results that you want or it won't. If your nervous system feels good, if being, if generating that much exposure for you feels good to your body, and actually let me caveat that, it's never going to feel really, really good. <laughs> it's always going to be a little bit scary, right? It's always going to be like, oh my God, I am sharing my story with the world and this is terrifying as fuck. It will be terrifying. However, are you able to acclimate to that from a nervous system perspective? And this is what I learned the first time I did a book, right? where I thought I'd done a lot of nervous system work, a lot of mindset work. I was energetically activated. I was ready. I was like, yes, this is the vision I have. And then that book was launched and then I went into freak out mode. I duna dived. I promoted it a little bit, but then I went back under the covers, right? Because it was so much freaking exposure. <laughs> it was so much exposure. So it's really, really important to do the work, to do the inner work, the inner preparation, the, the nervous system calibration, as well as the external strategy, right? And this is always that beautiful balance between masculine and feminine, right? The intuitive and the strategic, the inner work and the outer work, right? It's so important to have a combination of both. I felt the same too, Tash, especially guys, because, you know, and if there's anyone watching who has thought about writing a chapter in a book or thought about writing their own book, Often, and I'll tell you a little story here, okay? This is very, very true for me and very real for me right now. There will be a story within you that is calling to be shared, but the idea of sharing that story is like hell to you, feels like hell to you, right? There'll be this battle that happens internally where your soul goes, you need to share that thing, that thing that happened that you're terrified of sharing, you need to share it. And your head goes, ain't no fucking way I'm gonna share that. What's that gonna do to my credibility? What's that gonna do to my profile? What's that gonna do to my authority, right? There's always gonna be this battle. And this is very true for me because at the moment, I'm a co-author in another book. It's called The Younger Self Letters. And this book, we're getting to Wall Street Journal bestseller status. So in order to get to Wall Street Journal bestseller status, we need to have a minimum of 25 to 30,000 sales. So when I decided to sign up to this project, which you know was a hefty investment because I knew the amount of exposure that it was gonna generate, and there's a huge amount of marketing that has to happen, my strategy brain went, oh great, this is a fabulous opportunity for me to present myself the way I wanna be presented, to share that story really strategically and to have it really polished and you know to really impress. But whenever I sat down to write the freaking chapter, it wouldn't come, right? I started writing it and I stopped and it felt yuck. It didn't feel right. It felt contrived. It felt fake. And I knew there was a voice in my head that said, you need to talk about that time that you, you, you were suicidal and you, you nearly, you know, that, that moment in time where you were the closest you've ever been to ending your life. <laughs> and I went, my head went, fuck that in a hurry. There ain't no way I'm sharing that story with the world. But it was the story that had to be shared, right? Because that moment in time was such a profound, such a profound thing for me that happened. And the learnings that I got through sitting in that experience that I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing today if that hadn't have happened. I would not be the woman that I am today capable of holding the space that I can hold if that thing, if that, if that really awful experience did not happen to me. So I had to write it. I had to write about it. And I sobbed the whole time and I delayed it. And I messaged my 
my publisher and I said, I can't do it. It's late. It's not finished. And she said, it's okay. I have, I'm holding space for you. Finish the chapter, take the time, do it the way you need to do it and share it with the world because that is going to have the power to transform people who read it. And I tell you, I'm shitting myself at the prospect of launching that, okay? But I know that it's a very powerful thing that I'll be doing at the same time. The fear of judgment is so real and scary. It totally is. It totally is. So um, essentially, if you've been listening from the beginning, you will have heard the seven steps that I've taken you through that can really help you monetize a book, whether that's a multi-author or a solo. All of these steps will also very powerfully help you with your content creation. The idea is that you are using your words and your message, the power of your voice to activate people, to inspire people, right? To move people into taking that next step with you. This is the power of the voice. It cannot be underestimated. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you two very exciting, two very exciting, new book projects that I'm working on that Ashram Publishing has in the pipeline. It's, these are especially for people who are entrepreneurs, right? I, I publish the stories and the, the expertise of entrepreneurs and in particular of people who believe the work they do in their business is their soul work, okay? This is really important. It's not just a side hustle. It's, it's, it's a soul hustle, right? It's soul work. It's soul level. It's a soul level mission that you are doing in your business. If that is you and you would love the opportunity to share your story in a multi-author book published by Ashwin Publishing and participate in a summit just like this one, because all of the projects that I do in my publishing company are books and summits together because the combination is so powerful, then please have a listen. Listen, if either of these two uh, topics speak to you. So the first one, the first topic, well, the first title is called Business Alchemy, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Monetizing Your Soul Work. So this book is for the people who in their business, they serve entrepreneurs. They work to help entrepreneurs grow their business. My vision for, for Business Alchemy is that this is like, this will become like a roadmap for the entrepreneur. Maybe they're just starting out. Maybe they're one or two cycles into their business and they want to learn how to monetize their soul work, right? How to turn their soul purpose and their soul work into a profitable business. So if you work in that area, and I'm going to rattle off a few areas that we're looking for people, we're looking for experts in the following areas, business strategy, sales, branding, marketing, copywriting, mindset, money mindset, visibility mindset, sales mindset, uh, energetics, intuitive development, excuse me, intuitive development, voice and self-expression, messaging, content creation, nervous system healing, human design or gene keys, packaging and course creation, high-end offers, launching, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse, soul mission and purpose, balancing masculine and feminine energy for success. If you specialize in any of those areas and you work with entrepreneurs to help them build their business, to help them make more money and find more clients, then this book is going to be an excellent, excellent opportunity for you, okay? Like I said, it's going to be a roadmap. You're gonna get the opportunity to write a 3,000 word chapter on your area of expertise. You will you can teach and really dive into very powerful, into a very powerful detail with 3,000 words. And that is looking to be launched around September, okay? So the launch and the summit for that will take place in September. The second book, which has only really just dropped in today, the title, <laughs> it's been taking its time. This book is going to be called Unapologetic, Speak Your Truth, Claim Your Place. So this book is going to deeply serve, or it's going to deeply serve the woman who really desires to access the truth of who she is. She desires to step into that unapologetic energy where I am fully claiming everything that I have. I'm claiming my place. I'm speaking my truth. So if the work you do in your business supports women's empowerment, if you help women to, whether it's through self-worth work, whether it's through sexual healing work, whether it's through uh, confidence, you help people experience more confidence or more vitality. If the work you do in your business helps your clients to step into that next level, unapol I am unapologetically claiming the power of who I am through a variety of different ways. It could be birth work, 
so many different areas, then this book is going to be perfect for you as well. And this is looking like it's going to be an October or November release as well as the summit. So the two titles, I will lay them again. Business Alchemy, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Monetizing Your Soul Work or Unapologetic, Speak Your Truth, Claim Your Place. So that really comes to the end of the uh, masterclass that I have for you guys. I'd love to hear some insights or some ahas. Uh, I'd love to hear what's stood out for you about this masterclass and especially if you're thinking or considering participating in a publishing project such as this, then definitely reach out and let me know, okay? Let me know because I bring 10 years of experience in the entrepreneurial space to my publishing company and to the books that I, that I facilitate with my clients. I've been a business strategist for five years working with online entrepreneurs to help them grow their business. I'm also a kinesiologist and I'm also a mindset specialist and I bring all of that, right, energetics, mindset, strategy to the table and publishing to the table to support my clients to speak their truth, to really get clear on the most powerful form of message that they have and to share that with the world through published works, which is just such soul work for me, right? This is absolutely the next level for me in, 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 in the soul expression that I am here to facilitate. I love it. It is the thing that lights me up more than anything else. I was relaying to a mentor of mine the other day that when I held Wild Woman Rising, it's not in here, it wasn't here before. When I held the book, I got the mock-up sent to my house about a week and a half ago. When I held that book in my hands, <laughs> it felt, it was as if, it was very, very similar to the experience of holding my baby in my hands for the first time. And I know because that happened only very recently. It was I, I gave birth 11 weeks ago. Because it is a baby, right? And I get goosebumps talking about it. It is such a powerful thing to be able to hold your book in your hands that has been a labor of love that you have birthed it's moved through the birth canal and that launch is the final crowning before you push that baby through, right? <laughs> Great analogy. Yeah, I think so. But it very much is. It's an incredibly powerful experience to hold your book in your hands. Yeah, there is nothing quite like it aside from holding your baby because it is a baby. Alrighty, my darlings. Uh, I wanted to put in the uh, the link for my Facebook group as well, but I think that was why I couldn't go live a few times. So if you have loved this summit and you would love to be around me and my energy more, I would love to invite you to join my Facebook group. It's called the Business Alchemy Collective. My brand is Business Alchemy, which is why this book is called Business Alchemy. Uh, the Business Alchemy Collective, I do lots of free trainings in there on all sorts of things from energetics to mindset to publishing to story to strategy to content creation to sales. Heaps and heaps of different things in there. I'm going to post the link so that you can come and join me in there. It's a really nice space to hang out in. And if you'd like to touch base about either of those book titles that I just shared with you before, please reach out. We've only got one chapter per expert. So uh, let me know, reach out and let me know. Alrighty, take care. See you later.